my name is Joshua Welsh. I'm a staff scientist at the NIH. Uh, I've been involved in a, a couple of initiatives uh, within ISEV uh, and the community. Um, and today I just wanted to take you through three of the basic ones around uh, educational materials that are very useful for you when you're starting out in this field particularly. And that's an area that I'm very interested in personally. I think that there may be some groups that are highly advanced and can do some amazing things, but unless everyone else can use them and understand them, their impact for the field is very limited. So I have a, a great focus on trying to disseminate uh, a lot of the, the novel technologies and things we're working on and, and let that uh, be usable for the rest of the field. So the first thing that uh, I've been had the fortune and misfortune to work on in the last couple of years is MICEF. Um, it's been a huge responsibility. The field is rapidly expanding um, and the MICEF guidelines are, are kind of really looked to for um, where the field is, how we should report our data. So MICEV 2022, and it's now MICEV 2023 because it's, uh, we've been struggling to, to accumulate all of this information, has been led by myself, uh, Debla, Lorraine, Clotilde, and Ken uh, Whitworth. So I, I want to give a quick update on this uh, because a lot, of the, a lot of people contributed this in the field, and um, I think this will also be in the, the General Assembly as well. So originally this draft was prepared uh, by myself, uh, Deborah and Lorraine. Uh, this took a couple of years. We've been reaching out to a lot of um, experts in the field. Us three don't have all of the knowledge of the field, so we've been having to reach out to others. This now comprises uh, 11 sections. Um, it has over 1,000 co-authors, so processing all of that feedback from you as a community has been a, a huge, huge task uh, split among us three people. Um, and this manuscript now has grown to, to something like 90 pages and has like 600 references. It's, it's a bit of a behemoth. Um, and with that, um, because it's been so big um, and had so much input, one of the things that we've had to tackle now that's been kind of different from previous years is, is making this really um, intuitive and consistent throughout. And this is why we're having to take a little bit more time than we anticipated and have uh, kind of a professional set of editorial team go through it and make sure that it's consistent all of the way through. And also so that there's you know, broad agreement across the whole manuscript where multiple authors have, have contributed. So this, this is in the final stages and we're planning to submit this to Jeff. So not only is you know, putting together this huge manuscript a great responsibility, it's a huge responsibility for the journal editors as well and, and how they review this. Um, and that's something that's also being uh, organized right now. So Jeb is going to perform an expedited review, uh, and that will probably comprise of 40 or 50 reviewers. So there's going to be a huge amount of feedback, uh, even if it is focused on the sections. And then what will be done is that that final revised manuscript will be sent out to the community, um, again, to check that there is still consensus in this, this large manuscript that's been heavily edited uh, and revised since you last got to see it. So th that's kind of the update for MICEV. Um, at the moment, you know, we're, we're still publishing uh, and we're still having to refer to guidelines and that's MICEV 2018. But I wanted to just talk to you briefly about something we've introduced into MICEV 2023 and that's what MICEV is and what MICEV is not. So MICEV for us, for the field, primarily we're trying to increase transparency, rigor and reproducibility. And we also want it to serve as an introduction to people like you attending education days and maybe new to the field, um, you know, where the EV field lies right now, where there's broad agreement, disagreement, what we need to work on and what we've sussed out already. One of the things that, you know, primarily we know what MICEV is, what we also wanted to make very clear is what MICEV is not. Um, we don't expect MICEV to answer everybody's questions. We also don't expect it to be weaponized to stop publications going through. Um, and in the manuscript now, you'll see that there's kind of uh, these examples, are, uh, these bullet points are given, um, and some examples with them. Um, so if you haven't done a Western blot, it doesn't mean your manuscript shouldn't be published. You know, if you're publishing on a new technique that doesn't have um, guidelines yet, it shouldn't be disregarded because it isn't in my set. Um, so we thought it was very important to, to keep this in mind, and this isn't just applicable to the new manuscript, it's applicable retrospectively to 2014 and 2018 as well. 
So the other thing that's been going on and is very useful for, for newcomers to the field are these massive open online courses. So MOOC 1 was originally kicked off by Cecilia in 2016. This has had over 98,000 uh, unique visitors and has a very good rating of uh, 4.7 out of 5. And this was really just a, a, a brief introduction to EVs and understanding uh, the field. Um, in 2019, Carolina um, introduced MOOC 2. Um, so this has also been greatly um, appreciated by the field and has great ratings. And then being part of the education committee as well, we, we sent out a survey when I first joined that committee a couple of years ago. And having a new um, MOOC was one of their top priorities of the community. That's, that's one of the things they really wanted and appreciated. So led by Rink Newland and Edwin Vanderpol is uh, MOOC 3, which is uh, just being announced uh, and focuses on detection and isolation of intact EVs. All of these are available at icep.org forward slash education. So this primarily to the selection to be part of this MOOC, which is uh, going to be a slightly different format. It's going to be um, perpetual, so you, it will be uh, added to in time. What's there now isn't uh, just going to stay as it is. It's going to expand. It's mainly applicable to techniques and in vitro research, commercially available things. We want these to be useful to you, know, you as the broader community and detection of intact EVs. This doesn't cover functional assays. That might be something uh, we do in future and the speakers, we've, uh, they've tried to have no conflicts of interest. No conflict of interest and not be inventors. The other thing that's been really useful for this MOOC is that they've kept a consistent format for all of the presentations which are online on YouTube. Um, they're going to be in a consistent manner so that you can uh, contrast and compare the, all of the, uh, the techniques together. So the final thing um, I wanted to talk about is this EV flow cytometry compendium. So this has been a huge task. This has been in the works for over five years. Um, my flow site EV, which you'll hear about in the later flow talks, was a framework for how to report EV flow cytometry. But it didn't tell you about the whys, and it didn't give you the understanding to flow cytometry. And that's something that we wanted to do all in one go. And unfortunately, we just had to split them in order for it to be ergonomic. So this is a huge, this is 100 pages. Um, and there's the EV flow cytometry working group that, that culminated all of this information. And there's so much uh, expertise in there that we thought it best to write a compendium. And it's essentially a book, but we wanted this to be open, uh, openly accessible. So this will take you through all of the fundamentals of flow cytometry. It will take you the fundamentals of light fluorescence and light scattering. It will take you through the, the hardware, like the optics and fluidics of a flow cytometer, how the electronic signals are processed, and even down to the experimental design and your assay design. So it really is a fully comprehensive framework. Um, I really hope this is an example to uh, other techniques in the field that something else like this could be available. Um, because unless you really understand the technique, you'll, you'll never really fully understand your data and where things are going wrong. So with that, I'll hand over to um, the organizers again, who I think have a quiz. And I'm around for the week, and I'm very happy to answer questions. Thank you.